Academy Foundation presents this introduction to quantum relativity. Quantum relativity provides a conceptual framework and algorithms needed to show how the diverse subjects and processes of physics work together. Between 1925 and 1927, Bauer and Heisenberg were trying to understand the contextual qualities of atoms. They realized that each atom has a variety of qualities with classical mechanisms that could be contradictory to other qualities and mechanisms while each remains true. One simple thing has many complex perspectives, and there is a probability that some degree of each perspective will apply simultaneously given a context. In human terms, they were trying to understand how a person can be a child, parent, sibling, employee, spouse, citizen, and many other things. Each royal in this tree has a job of some sort, and those marrying in have other relationships and defining features they bring into the family with them. In a way, complex matter like atoms is similar to people. This basic principle we take for granted in ordinary life became the Copenhagen interpretation defining quantum mechanics. While this seems obvious to normal people, there remains many who contest the Copenhagen interpretation. Physicists are abstract thinkers. They aren't particularly good at conceptualizing or ordinary human skills. We take a particularly long road to get around to comprehending what many take for granted. But at the end of the day, we broke it down into manageable chunks we can then reformulate and make testable predictions with. The appeal of Big Bang is its simplicity. It is easy to grab this idea and exclude or distort other perspectives. The universe is quantum complex. In other words, all the other valid perspectives are also true. The trick is figuring out how they work together. Quantum relativity resolves this by showing where the boundaries are. First, it acknowledges the historical sequence in the thinking. Big Bang came out when the established universe was the Milky Way. Lemaitre envisioned the universe unfolding and forming everything in the process. Hubble disagreed vehemently. He showed galaxies are spaced an average of 2 million light years apart and the deeper you look, the more homogeneous it appears. Einstein also disagreed, and spent the rest of his life trying to figure out how the universe conserves itself. Everett's thinking somehow got twisted into something esoteric. Put in simple island universe terms, each galaxy is its own universe going through its own Big Bang process. The diversity and ultimate homogeneity lead to conservation. In other words, you cannot give a complex thing an oversimplified answer. All the valid solutions are true given the reasonable boundaries of their context. The most important law in the universe is the first law of thermodynamics. The first law defines the relationship of conserved transformations for an individual unit in and out of context. Anything put into a context is considered open because it is exchanging value with that context. The unit context is labeled U'. prime. Work labeled W occurs when value is exchanged relative potential labeled Q. The value added or removed put out of context is the identity labeled DU. It is distributed among latent and discrete variables. To be exchanged, energy needs information. That information affects how it will distribute among the internal variables that ultimately translate into work or inefficiency. Leibniz and Clark began a long debate about whether space is a continuous or disconnected thing. Let us settle the argument by agreeing with both and labeling the combination space-time. Points of matter have their own defined spaces. They are disconnected from each other, separated by time resisting the flow of changes in identity. These are then mapped into a distribution we can collectively call space-time. For simplicity here, we are just using the concepts of pressure and volume as applied to latent and discrete manifold transformations. Light is space unfolding as volume and transforming into the unfolding pressure of time. It is labeled latent to reflect being potential. A significant part of latent space is potential for light to propagate in. The pressure and volume values separate at the spherical wave fronts of CMB. At this point they become the static background temperature and pressure of the universe. Put back into focus by discrete functions and mixed as with passing light, it becomes active and perturbs as matter. The most common example is the cosmic neutrino background radiation. Discrete space is the space of matter. As this diagram shows, 
it is fairly easy to break the variables down to show 12 distinct generations of matter, six of which are subatomic. Subatomic is ambiguous because it also includes attributes of groups of atoms like hardness and surface tension. They are all the possible quantum configurations that define atoms. This is one of several conceptual devices quantum relativity uses to help show how matter is put together. A table like this one can be very misleading if you think of it as a linear process. The table starts with individual logic perturbed by group dynamics. Ironically it means fundamental things are bigger than we normally think because they describe individual qualities of groups. Space is constructed in degrees from very basic concepts. We use manifold to manage these variables because they allow for contextual applications. Hypersphere contexts account for all six of the initial stages as line, surface, and volume variables come into form as discrete points of density or pressure, then geometrize as atoms. Atoms give us our familiar ideas of shape spaces. From this point on, the nature of matter diverges from space-like to time-like as the hypersphere unfolds. This artist's depiction shows chains and groups of galaxies moving in what are called filaments. Their motion creates a rate of flow like opening a faucet. Their distribution creates a divergence in the volume of time between. Even when matter is not emitting light to transform from value roles space to time, the interaction of distributed matter also creates space-time. Einstein was convinced the future of physics would solve his problems by handling oscillation and emission. Oscillation is when an identity transforms. Matter subject to acceleration will transform or lose its identity. Identities are set by the manifold information, namely the distribution of applied and attributed values defining the spaces of a thing. For light it is the distribution of emission and absorption lines. Light needs the gradient of static pressure and volume to propagate in. CMB shows how diverse that is. The gradient not only enables propagation, it adds a degree of twist to the propagation that causes roles to change places and its identity to transform. We put static with emission because static things are holding value to a spatial definition. The information of propagation is its moment. We say moment because as it propagates the moment shifts by the Doppler effect. The moment loses value only due to interference and the ability to extend the observation surface and time to account for distribution. Quantum relativity uses complex variables to show the individual logics of chromodynamics constructing space-time through strong interactions. This truth table shows how complex interactions evolve into octonian and real numbers where matter geometrizes. Now it behaves as we are used to, except we have to remember these logics have limited boundaries. When matter is accelerated, its use of space controlled by the change logic diminishes. Because space-time constants do not change, degenerate densities of matter like protons can lose energy in the form of a particle beam. They emit the energy of their identity as light. We usually think of space-time like this. This is general relativity providing only one of many perspectives. General relativity was developed to prove special relativity in classical terms. In the last century we've learned the universe is far more complex than we ever previously conceived. Many of these complexities are better handled by mathematicians than physicists simply because they describe how the variables and spaces are constructed on an even more abstract level. Einstein's field equations, when properly analyzed, can provide most of the six types of gravity. In this picture we have a complex volume called a Ricci. A surface tension puts pressure on the volume to satisfy the geodesic equation for surface gravity. Each of those variables is a potentially different type of gravity. Add substance in the space between them, such as dirt and atmosphere, and you get yet a barometric form commonly called specific weight. The total displacement relative to the environment gives microgravity and a generalized effect that translates into a critical variable in orbital mechanics. Once a discrete point is established, the key volume and surface variables are filled. A third set of electromagnetic spaces are then projected around the object. Within those spaces other components can occur with their own unique interactions. Like the lady in the center of influence here, her relationships are in degrees of intensity, can be complex and even indirect. 
space-time isn't just this one classical perspective. The Copenhagen interpretation officially blames it for everything and states that all the valid solutions are simultaneously true and allows the variables to float around and alter their contexts. Space-time has many more contexts than just gravity and it has limitations. Using fabric as an analogy, the weft is permeation that gives value to space. The entire space is simultaneously defined independent of time or change. The warp is the change offering a shape potential. This is where value is permitted for space to fill into. Time is a flux resistance to change. It isn't the warp or the weft, but rather the interference pattern between them. Any changes occur relative to the speed of light and the space-time density called a frame of reference. Cosmic space-time consists of latent variables to include value propagating as light or standing as background temperature and pressure. As light propagates, it twists and stretches from a form of weft into warp. On that fabric of space-time occurs discrete instances of matter. These are distributed across time. Depending how you choose to observe, the universe appears spherical, hyperbolic, or flat. Quantum relativity naturally recognizes all three are not only true but interconnected to work together. Quantum relativity includes all the perspectives given working boundary conditions. It can then say Big Bangs are local events and show the field conditions of the Lyman alpha process that mass produces hydrogen. In other words, the answer to asymmetric baryogenesis is as accessible as putting down attachments to exclusive thinking and following the established solutions as processes working together. Quantum relativity uses an architectural model to help explain how all these things fit together. Computer nerds may recognize this as an adaptation of the ISO model used to adapt an operating system's functions to the user's demands. Put simply, it adapts. The user mode fits neatly into the latent, discrete, and void distribution slots. These are subject to everything around them and sequentially among each other. The phase mode is where the system simply does by following the rules. Thermodynamics, interconnectivity, and the object of the first law are the most pervasive features of phase mode. Quantum relativity sees the biggest problem of physics as simply educating how the pieces of established physics work together. By resolving this, we eliminate diminishing returns where we solve already solved problems or chase manufactured problems to nowhere. Nature is untidy. There are often many correct ways to the same or similar solution. By accepting all valid solutions, we can avoid manufacturing problems. By this argument we have already shown dark energy is simply the unfolding flow of time exhibited by changes in light. Dark matter requires a little more understanding of thermodynamics to see how it is a problem manufactured from poor understanding. Zwicky used the virial theorem to show the kinetic energy of many bodies together provides a center of gravity for a significantly greater mass. The key word here is kinetic. It is not a conventional idea of mass or gravity. It is a measure of motion. It does shape space and it does have the potential to create a hypersurface consistent with a black hole. Archibald Wheeler coined the term black hole to try and describe a gravitationally collapsed object. What he was thinking about was neutron stars and their degenerate density being a key feature of pulsars. He later retracted the association, which had effectively connected black holes with 18th century dark stars. This association is incorrect, but because it is what everyone expects, it is how the equations get misinterpreted and the bottom falls out of physics. Quantum relativity has a whole unit dedicated to understanding how singularity occurs in the construction of space-time. The short and simple answer is that kinetic energy of many moving parts form a common frame of reference that defines itself as a partial Cauchy hypersurface. That hypersurface is a hypersphere variable with multiple contextual roles satisfying the definition of a singularity that strongly interacts. The motion of the objects around the singularity push things toward it. When a mass crosses the event horizon, it is suddenly subjected to changes in hypersphere contexts. In other words, an effect of quantum mechanics causes a sudden change in state from a free object with mass into a confined propagation of light. And because time is significantly dilated in this shaped space, the propagation is very nearly at a standstill from our perspective. As this slide shows, 
we can easily follow the relationships of Einstein's field equation variables with space-time constants to see the relationships between these spaces. There is no invention necessary. The only thing needed was to put down attachment to exclusive solutions and dig deeper into our understandings of other working solutions in the neighboring department of mathematics. Gravity is the weakest interaction. To trap light by surface gravity alone violates boundary conditions. All interactions derive from the shaping of space-time. Strong interactions are the strongest. Chromodynamics shows the strong interaction traps light by shaping space to form matter in a process called confinement. The virial theorem was devised by Clausius, the father of entropy and the second law of thermodynamics to show how the process can reverse. Entropy is far more complex. At zero and one are complex changes in the nature of identity. The virial theorem shows kinetic energy forming a zero entropy feature. In the right conditions it perturbs a process of strong interaction. This strong interaction creates and destroys by bringing value into focus then discharging it in a consistent pattern enabling new focus consistent with Big Bang. We now have a universe where multiple cosmologies are simultaneously true. Which brings us to Hubble's so-called law. Hubble proved the cosmological principle in protest of this law being named after him by Lemaitre. Hubble did not pretend to understand how light or space-time work. He only recognized that it was more complex than Lemaitre and his enthusiasts wanted. To answer we need to understand dilation variables relative to the first law in Doppler radar. In Doppler radar, distance is measured by the duration of emission to reception, and motion is measured by redshift. These reverse significance at Z equals 1, where orientation reverses except distance is no longer the proper factor due to transformation of form and dilation. Time is. The role of time is a function of distribution. It isn't the same thing as distance. The dots indicate derivatives of time. Like the smoke in a cigarette, light propagates through a medium that transforms its nature. Those transformations are measure relative to time. In the end, a little bleeds off as static, defining the background temperature and pressure. This bleed off is the Hubble parameter showing the rate of transformation along the path. It is affected by all the interference. It doesn't matter if the interference spans 46.85 billion light years or the 10 feet between walls in a room. The curves show the degree to which volume and pressure effects apply and reverse their significance. At Z equals 1 the effects of motion are so imperceptible that the effect is almost entirely the distributive change as a function of time. The light horizon is set by traversing the full length of the spectrum from gamma ray to where the information interferes with itself forming a spherical wave front in CMB. This is not the place for us to go into the details of light and Euler's solution to the d'Alembert shin. Euler showed the conflicting variables in a wave function are causal of the propagation. Those variables we would call emission and absorption or information. In other words he used classical Newtonian physics to show that light is basically rolling downhill by the force of its own value and the potential for that value to enter the available space. But because these two variables transform one into the other, they ultimately neutralize and cancel their action out. That is where they differentiate into static pressure and temperature at the spherical wave fronts of CMB. So to answer our initial question. Quantum relativity is an educational tool, a set of conceptualizations coordinated to show how the diverse parts of established physics work together. It holds the most untidy of all possible answers, namely that every valid perspective is right within the boundaries of its context. The modern world is flooded with exclusive, speculative, and wishful thinking to the point of diminishing returns. It is incredibly hard to figure out how one view relates at all to another, especially when each view has grown its own exclusive solutions and problems that don't necessarily work as advertised. Our idea with quantum relativity is to replace popular media as the source for conceptualizing with working systems so students and experts aren't chasing non-problems. Physics needs to evolve and trim off its extra fat so it can move forward again. Quantum relativity simply offers the means to begin this process. Thank you and remember to subscribe and watch our videos.